Um, and again, no one goes into a contract thinking there's going to be a, a problem. <laughs> you know, everyone assumes it's just going to be the greatest thing ever. And quite frankly, most projects go okay. There's no such thing as a perfect project. Most projects go okay. But it's the ones that have problems. And then those are the ones that didn't have the right contract. I mean, nothing's more heartbreaking when an owner or a GC or sub approaches me and they've been wronged, but they didn't have someone look at the contract to help them, you know, you know, balance the risk. And all of a sudden they've waived their consequential damages. And meanwhile, like for an owner, that's brutal. Consequential damages. If, if the contractor doesn't build the building properly, the owner can't operate it, can't generate revenue. All of a sudden those, you would think those would be all damages, but if there's a consequential yeah. damage waiver in there, the owners aren't entitled to any of those damages. Oh, that's huge. It's, 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 it's devastating. Uh, they, their damage would be limited to how much it costs to repair the issue, right? Whether that's $20,000 or a million. Meanwhile, the owner may not be able to rent it to any tenants, may not be able to operate his business, generating revenue from the gasoline or whatever is selling there. And those are all consequential damages and true, true damages. They may not be able to service their note because they're not generating any revenue. So of, of the, you know, the top 10 contract provisions out there, you know, figuring out what's your risk on the consequential damage one and making sure that you're not just because you're not just waiving that. Because as a matter of law, you're entitled to consequential damages unless you agree to waive it by contract. Yeah. Well, and if you don't have somebody protecting your interest, you may be waiving that and not realizing it. Right. Yeah. Well, they may say, hey, let's do a mutual consequential damage waiver, which appeals to everybody's sense of fairness. But they don't realize that the risk is asymmetrical. <laughs> that they don't have any consequential damage risk, but you have all the consequential damage risk. Meanwhile, they said, let's just waive it for both of us. Yeah. And and if I'm an owner and I'm trying to be the, you know, the good good guy at the table and I'm just trying to get my building built, I'm I'm probably just okay, that sounds reasonable because yeah. I mean we're shaking hands on this thing, right? You know, yeah, we're, we're, we're we are in the same boat, you know. Yeah. But it's 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 un, it's unfortunate. Any of those ways around that, and they could push back, you can have caps, you can have liquidated damages. There's a lot of other ways. You can work through those issues, um, but nothing's worse than a contract's been drafted in such a way that a claimant, whether it's the owner, general contractor, or subcontractor, is bereft of options because of the contract he signed.